We've been told many a time by visitors, tourists, that we are one of the best kept secrets in the United States. What do people come here to see? 50 something mammals, 30, 34, 35 species of fish, birds, I think there's over 200, about 234 reptiles, your amphibians. And of course, the king of the swamp is uh, the alligator. Sheila Carter has been guiding canoe trips in the Okefenokee Swamp for 30 years. It's the largest blackwater swamp in North America, a federal wildlife refuge, and a contender to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I feel closer to nature, closer to God out here, because he's, he's everywhere, but you can really feel him out here. Last summer, the Trump administration stripped protections from over half of America's wetlands, including hundreds of acres around the Okefenokee. That made things easier for Twin Pines, a mining company based in Alabama, to pursue a titanium mine less than three miles from the swamp. With the federal rollback undoing protections across the company's property, Twin Pines is now just waiting for the state to approve its permits. What do you make of the proposal to bring a mine pretty close to here? Not too fond of it. <laughs> I, just, I just worry what is it going to do to the swamp. I still feel like it's going to miss, do some kind of damage down there in the ecosystem. Save the swamp and stop the mine. Save the swamp. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. I brought you some more of these. Thank you for keeping all this out here. Rena Peck heads the Okefenokee Protection Alliance, which has been pressuring state authorities to reject the permits. She is especially concerned now that there is no federal oversight from the Army Corps of Engineers. What concerns does that raise for you now that it falls to the state? The Army Corps of Engineers would have required an environmental impact statement. It's an in-depth study where you'd have hydrogeological models, not created by the mining consultants, but by academics. That's not required by the state. If I were Twin Pines or any developer, I'd want to get my project done ASAP before the Biden administration changes the Clean Water Act back to protecting wetlands. So they're pushing hard. They've got their equipment ready at the door. Twin Pines initially applied to mine 12,000 acres in 2018. But after discussions with the Corps and tens of thousands of public comments, the company changed plans to try to prove it could be done safely. Twin Pines is now seeking to mine just 577 acres as a, quote, demonstration project, even proposing to replant native trees once they're done. But Peck is unconvinced. So the biggest areas that you're worried about are? My biggest concern is the hydrology of the swamp. If you pump 1.4 million gallons a day, which they plan to for their operations from the Florida aquifer, that sucks groundwater towards the mine and out from underneath the swamp. So the swamp water level lowers when the groundwater level moves away. If you don't have water in the swamp, you don't have a swamp anymore. Then you don't have the ecotourism that's bringing in $64.7 million a year. And you don't have the swamp-based tourism jobs, 700 of them, that this natural resource provides. So it's, it's an existential threat. It, it threatens the entire existence of the swamp. Twin Pines disputes this. A study it commissioned last year showed virtually no risk to the swamp's water levels. And in a statement to Vice News, the company's president, Steve Ingle, said, our plans are fully protective of the Okefenokee Swamp and surrounding environs. No one goes into a project of this magnitude with more skepticism than the people who put up the money. This isn't the first time the swamp has faced a mining threat. In the 90s, DuPont tried to mine titanium for its paint products on 38,000 acres of the Okefenokee's eastern edge. But intense public pressure and the Secretary of Interior's opposition led DuPont to cancel the project. But this time around, the town is split over the mine. See, this is small town America. As the county's largest employer, a federal prison, closes down, the Charlton County commissioners are eager to replace hundreds of lost jobs. They formally declared their support for the mine. 
A lot of people here live in poverty. When this proposal came about, so many people came to me and said, my children did not have health insurance before I went to work at this mine or this mine. They said, you know, if there's gonna be a reason for children to go to college and come back or, or stay here and make a good living, we, we desperately need this. The swamp's not something that I visit every few years. We go monthly to ride our bikes, so it's personal to me. So if, if this meant the end of anything, you know, environmentally, I'll be the first to take a stand that's against it. In light of the fact that the federal regulations are no longer there, you still feel comfortable supporting the proposal? We're going to have faith in our state regulatory agency that they will do their due diligence and investigate it to the point that they're comfortable with it being in Georgia. Twin Pines spent $375,000 lobbying Congress, the Army Corps, and federal agencies before the approval process shifted to the state of Georgia. The company and its owners also donated thousands to Governor Brian Kemp, former Senator David Perdue, and local officials who oversee the state's Environmental Protection Division. Twin Pines has a dicey environmental track record. It's been cited and fined for environmental violations in Florida, and other companies helmed by Twin Pines President Steve Ingle have been cited in North Carolina and Georgia, in total adding up to over 50 violations, including failure to monitor and polluting air, land, and water. What do you want to see happen? I'd love to see Governor Kemp step up and be the leader. So we are promoting um, to our membership, hey, write a letter to the governor saying stop the mine, save the swamp. He's received about 7,000 letters. We have asked, hey, can you do more? Can you please make sure that the strong science is done? This is the Okefenokee Swamp. It's, it's an uncommon swamp. It is so special. You do not mine right next to it. You do not threaten this swamp. Sometimes money just ain't everything. I mean, if you destroy this, and, and man has tried to destroy it, and so far it hasn't been destroyed, but there will be a time, and I hope it's not in my lifetime. Local scientists are keeping a close eye on the mine's potential impacts. As a St. Mary's Riverkeeper, Anna Laws has been collecting data for a year on one of the two rivers that flows out of the Okefenokee. Some of the things that wetlands can do is they'll, you know, be a buffer in storms. If there's a lot of rainfall, they can prevent excess runoff. You know, they uh, provide a lot of habitat for hunting, for animals that are pollinators. So as development continues in our area, industry moves in, we have to make sure that those wetlands are protected. We're monitoring the surface water chemical components. So these are like the before samples? Exactly. Nothing's happened on the mine yet. Why is it so important for you to get all this data right now? If the mine is able to go through, um, we have you know, established what all of the chemical parameters of this stream are prior to you know, the mining actually beginning. So that in future, when I continue sampling, I'll immediately be able to know something's wrong. What are you worried about? There's a reason why this is sort of the last area to be mined on the Trail Ridge, and that's because we have so many wetlands that the impacts are just, they're going to be higher. And without that federal regulatory authority, um, it's a lot harder to make sure everything is kosher, basically. Do you think there's a way for them to do this mine without you seeing an impact here in the water? There are definitely more sustainable practices that they could do, like completely avoiding um, stream impacts. I mean, it's really complicated. It's a complicated thought process because on the one hand, it would be nice if that didn't happen. But on the other hand, for example, I'm a painter and a lot of the um, heavy minerals coming from the mine is titanium, which I use. And, you know, we, we use products that would be coming from heavy mineral sands um, in our cell phones and everything. So it's hard to completely say no to the mine. And so, you know, my biggest priority is just to make sure that everything that happens in this watershed and development is an inevitability, that we advocate for sustainable development as much as possible.